So we've been spending some amount of time talking about backups and disaster recovery. And so maybe a question on our mind would be, can we use our backup systems for disaster recovery? Now, in some situations, the answer is going to be yes, we can. In other situations, eh, maybe we shouldn't do that. Let's go ahead and dive in and figure out what really the difference is between these types of technologies and when we might want to use our backups to help us out with our disaster recovery. A lot of organizations might look at the fact that they have a backup system in place and say, okay, do we really need all of the sophistication of the disaster recovery solutions that we just talked about in the last video? And in some cases, once again, the answer might be yes, and in some cases, the answer might be no. Let's talk through backup solutions and figure out what exactly they are and when we might want to use them. A key factor with backup solutions is oftentimes they can take a long time in order to recover data. This is especially going to be true if we are, for example, using tapes. We have to go find the tape that we need to pull the data from. It's also going to be true when our data is compressed. Oftentimes we're going to compress our backup data because we don't want to store terabytes and terabytes and maybe even petabytes of information that's all just backups that's going back in time in case we need it. And so we're going to compress that so that we are consuming as little storage as possible, and that's to save us money on purchasing additional disks. Furthermore, remember, we're not taking backups every single hour, every single minute. We're often taking these in intervals. And so maybe for a critical application, we are taking them in short intervals. Maybe our intervals are something along the lines of 30 minutes or an hour, assuming we can do that in a non-disruptive fashion. However, in other cases, we might only be taking these every 24 hours. And so we have to be concerned about, okay, if we're going to use backups in order to recover in the event of a disaster, how often are we taking those backups? And once again, this should come back to the idea of application tiers. Because if we have a tier one application and we're only taking 24 hour backups, well, that's probably not the right interval that we should be assigning to that particular tier. So the question is, will it work for disaster recovery? And once again, it will work, but let's just walk through this process. Let's say our data center just failed. Data center one is down. We have no more access to uh, the applications, the data, the systems. Maybe we lost power, whatever the situation is. This data center has been determined that it's going to be down for an extended period of time. At this point, we want to fail over to data center two. And in data center two, we have some hardware sitting over there that's been purchased, or maybe it's old hardware, but it's in the racks, it's ready to go. How do we get our applications and our data running when we're going to rely on our backup systems? Well, in this case, ideally we have a backup appliance here. If we don't have a backup appliance here, then we're going to have to go out and get the backup system wherever it is and drive it to this data center, more or less. And at this point, we are going to have to start to decompress that data. Remember, we compressed the data and it's not usable in a compressed state. So we've got to decompress that in order to get it all back and ready to go. So how long realistically is this going to take? Well, it might actually take up to several hours in order to decompress the data. And certainly we can prioritize certain tiers of applications over others, but it is going to take at least a, some amount of time that we need to factor into our DR strategy. Furthermore, once again, we need to consider the interval. Are these 24 hour backups? Are they eight hour backups? It's just going to depend on the application tier when our last virtual machine backup occurred. Now, once all of this is done, we can absolutely spin up our virtual machines in this environment. We will have access to the virtual machines. They will be running on servers. However, one thing to consider is where are these virtual machines being stored? Because the storage of the virtual machine is going to directly affect its performance. Truly, if we have a backup appliance on site, these appliances sometimes say that, hey, you can run these virtual machines straight from the appliance themselves. But these appliances are built to be low cost, and therefore the performance is going to be very low. And so do we actually have a storage array at this location? And if so, how long is it going to take to transfer that data? So now I've got to get it from the appliance onto the storage unit in order to make sure that we have good performance once those virtual machines are online. So worst case scenario, we actually could be talking about days. It might take several days to get back online in this scenario simply because of how many steps we're going to have to go through in order to get ourselves back online. Is this acceptable? Yeah, maybe. I mean, if we've got a tier three application list, that doesn't need to be back online for a few days, then we could probably use backups for tier three. In fact, I would argue that this is a pretty common methodology for getting our tier three applications back online. It's a beautiful thing because we already have the backup system in place and we know it's going to take a long time, but the priority level isn't such that it's going to matter. And therefore we save a bunch of money by deploying an existing backup solution for those tier three applications. However, does this make sense to do for uh, tier one applications? Eh, probably not. 
Although for smaller organizations, we might just not have a choice. It might be the only solution that we can afford, and we're just going to have to hope that <laughs> the event of a failure, that we are able to get our tier one applications back online in hours and not in days. Now that said, I just used a key word there, which is hope. We never want to have to hope anything. In fact, what we want to do is we want to test these types of things. There should be absolutely no question in our mind how long it's going to take to get back online with this scenario. We should be able to test it and go back to our executives and say, hey, I did test it and this one application, and every executive has applications they care about, this one application is going to take eight hours to get back online in the event of a failure. Are we comfortable with this? And they might look at that and say, yes, we are comfortable with that. Or they might say, oh my goodness, let me open up the pocketbook and let's spend some money because that needs to be back online within 30 minutes, not within eight hours. And so the more testing we can do in our environment, the better off we're going to be for a whole lot of reasons. So that's backups. Now, when we talked about disaster recovery software, we talked about the idea of replication and using this replication technology in order to really speed up the process of failover. Because once again, if we have a living version of a virtual machine over here in data center two, and this is truly a clone of the data that's happening over in data center one, well then bringing it back online is going to be very simple. However, running this clone implies a few things. First of all, we've got to have the software in place in order to make this happen. Second of all, we have to have the compute in place in order to run the virtual machine, which by the way, does mean hypervisor licensing. And we're going to need good storage performance, and so we're going to need a storage array. And so the infrastructure that we have to build in order to support this DR software and the replication technology is way more significant than we would need in the event of these tier three backup type of recoveries that we talked about. Incidentally, by the way, rather than deploying DR software, if we want to save a little bit of money, sometimes our storage arrays themselves will actually have this functionality. Now this usually requires that we have the same storage array in both locations. And so if we've got a storage array made by vendor A here on the right, and that same storage array exists by the same vendor here on the left, then we could probably enable replication between them and possibly take advantage of that from a disaster recovery perspective. So long as we have good tools in place, and once again, we test this process to make sure that it's not going to take super long in order to bring, or at least longer than expected to bring everything back online, then we will be good to go as well. So it's not just that we have to lock into DR software that is its own entity. We could use the DR software that's embedded on storage arrays. And so ultimately, regardless of the methodology that we use, we need to think through the process that we're going to have to go through to bring our virtual machines back online. And as mentioned several times by now, we need to test that process in order to know for certain how long it's going to be before we're back online and how much data we might lose in that process. If we think through a replication scenario, well, now we've just lost data center one. We just have to flip a switch and we are now running in data center two, as we talked about in the last video. Although we might need some amount of network convergence in this case, but you know, if we test this out and we've got a 15 minute uh, back online time, that's pretty good. And if we only end up losing 15 minutes of data, that's pretty good too. And this would be a great target for tier one applications so long as our organization can afford it. And so this is why I've said several times that backups will work for disaster recovery, but they're best reserved for tier three applications. It's best if we can deploy other solutions for tier one and possibly tier two. You know, tier two is kind of in that in-between state where we could really go either direction depending on which applications are in tier two. But ultimately we've got solutions that are going to be more expensive that get us back online faster and lose less data. And we've got solutions like our existing backup platform that can get us back online eventually. And we will lose some amount of data, maybe more so than we would have otherwise, but it's certainly going to save us a whole lot of money to deploy those solutions instead of something that's faster and better, but we don't actually need it. So I think the key factor here is keeping in mind that backups were built in order to help us restore our lost data. They weren't built with disaster recovery in mind, even though we did see that we can apply them in some situations. The DR solutions, they tend to rely on this concept of replication. So we're more actively replicating our data and we're keeping those virtual machines in a, a good state where they can take over immediately in the event of an outage. So backup solutions, again, they can work, but they're best suited for those lower tiers of applications. We don't necessarily want to rely on backups for our tier one applications, for example, but they might be a great fit at tier three. And so let's just make sure that when we embrace this tiered application structure as part of our DR strategies, that we're applying the appropriate solution to each one. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.